everyone. It's Anne. Today is Thursday, December 7th, 2017. I hope everyone is doing great. I am popping in to do a, maybe not super quick, but relatively quick update uh, to talk to you guys about what I've been working on so far the month of December. Um, we have actually had weather that feels like winter, which has been great because I love winter. Uh, it was 16 yesterday when I got up, uh, a little warmer today, I think it was 24 here at the house, but we've had our first snow and not that it's anything crazy, like we had a half an inch and now it's still snowing, but the sun is coming out. So I don't suspect we'll have the snow sticking for very long, even though it has been, uh, struggling to get out of the thirties here, all temperatures in Fahrenheit. Uh, out of the 30s here for the last several days. So I've been thrilled. Um, I sort of had to laugh because last year we had some decent snowfalls and some days we, we never had a plow come through and we're kind of at the end of our what our town takes care of. So as a result, you know, sometimes like we get plowed less. I mean, we're a back street in a small subdivision kind of thing. So we get plowed less frequently than let's say the main road, which is route four, but we've already had a, the plow come through today. And I was shocked because, you know, we get six inches, crickets chirping, no plows. Today we have barely half an inch and it wasn't anywhere even close to half an inch when the plow came through. So go figure, no idea how that's calculated or figured out or whatever. So. That is the news from here. I looked at the calendar ongoing and realized that I kind of better do an update post because um, I probably will not get a video made between the 21st and the end of the year. Um, so that means that I want to do kind of a um, plans for 2018 video and I know I need to carve out some time to do that in the next week. So if I don't do this, um, time will escape away from me. Uh, that also said, I'm going to just do a very brief update on what I've been working on with my Chatelaine, like where I am on that project. And I will wait and do another Chatelaine Diaries um, episode after the turn of the year, probably mid month. So all that said, let's get started. Um, first up, I wanted to kind of go outside my normal uh, how I do things list um, and show you guys a um, my ATC swap package that came in the mail this week. Um, so I will put the link down below. This is the cross stitch card and ATC swap group on Facebook hosted by Adele Stitches, Adele Cat Stitches, I think is who she is in many, many places. But at any rate, um, every other month we do an artist trading card, an ATC, and every other other month we do an actual card card. So November was an ATC and that came in the mail from Lorna who is in Scotland. She sent me this super cute card. Um, with the theme of cookies and cocoa and has this cute little perforated paper motif stitched on it which I loved I thought that was super cute and then she tucked in some other goodies um, this pretty card gorgeous colors on that and a very nice note inside um, she sent me this Highland cattle uh, stitch mark or stitch marker needle minder very cute. Um, that is from, hang on, hang on, hang on. Cirrus Creations. Um, not sure if they're an Etsy store. If I can find them, I'll link to them. I suspect they're over in the UK somewhere. But anyway, she sent me that. She sent me this gorgeous piece of hand dyed fabric from Jodri Designs. This is a 28 count Brittany. Um, it is in this color winter frost and it's kind of an icy blue 
slightly mottled. Um, it's getting a little washed out from our funky sun today, but that. And then she sent two Jodry Designs hand dyed threads. Um, the green one is called Winter Solstice, kind of pine greens. And the pink one is Tabs Tangles. I love those all together, beautiful soft colors. So um, I will definitely have, be able to put the winter frost to good use. Um, and then these will get incorporated into some other projects this year, upcoming year. Um, so thank you, Lorna. I really appreciated the thought that you put into putting my little package together. I love all of it. And um, yeah, I just, these little mugs of cocoa are absolutely adorable. Love them. Um, so that said, I have finished my piece that's gonna go into my card for my um, swap partner. And the way that the swap works is you don't, like I didn't send my November package to Lorna. Uh, I sent it to someone else and so Lorna sent to me and someone else is sending to Lorna. So it's more of kind of a round robin-y thing. So the chances of my person for the December swap knowing I'm sending this to him or her is basically nil because it could be anybody in the group that's participating. So I will show you my finished stitch, which is this. Ooh, the opal sparklies are showing up really good on this. This is uh, an ornament from the 2016 Just Cross Stitch Ornaments issue. I stitched it on a 25 count opal even weave with the sparklies, which you can see. I hand dyed it myself in the colorway Solstice, which is kind of a blue gray. And then the threads are um, a hand paint uh, multicolor, obviously, thread from Color and Cotton. Angela popped this into the December packages of 2016 as a thank you for her club subscribers. So I thought it came out really great. Um, I tried to leave enough space around the edges so that if the recipient wanted to, they could, you know, pretty easily put a backing on it and make it into an ornament, but it'll fit into the card opening just fine as it is so yeah so I finished that little guy up so that is gonna go out in the mail this week since I've shown you guys the finish um, and so let's move on to other things I have finished the December block for the under the sea sal from Lakeside Needlecraft the design is by Doreen Jones and this is the one I've been working on all year it came out with one block a month from January through December 2017, and it is the Under the Sea Cell, and it is done. Done, done. Uh, the fabric is a 25 count even weave. It's a stamped print, um, printed colorway. It's an ombre, so it's slightly lighter here and slightly darker here, but it's just on the one side of the fabric. The back is just plain white. Um, I chose to stitch mine one over one because I have a kind of small spot that I had in mind for this. Um, so I used the DMC as called for for the regular cottons in the pattern and instead of doing two over two over two or one over two depending on your fabric count I just did one over one. Um, the other things I changed were the DMC light effects, which you can see would have been used here in the um, jellyfish and or some of the fish, like this little fish right here. The stripes are in the DMC light effects. In theory, I hated it, so I switched it out and I used a petite treasure braid that was the same kind of greeny blue sparkle. Um, so I used that instead. Um, for the seaweed, I used that same blending blending thread with one 
one strand of the called for DMC to give the seaweed a little bit of sparkle. You can see that right there. And then instead of doing the um, water bubbles as the 5200, I think is what they were charted for, I actually used size 12 beads. You guys can see those. Um, they're mostly clear, but they have a little bit of iridescence to them for just a little bit of sparkle. Um, and then the final block, which is this one down here with the crab and this big clamshell, um, it came with the ability to put your initials in here, but they were huge and I didn't like that. So um, it had the date charted and your initials um, with an alphabet. It came with an alphabet. So I just put the year. Um, I just like that better. So I did it. Um, yeah, super cute. I thought the motifs were great. I love, I think my favorites are this little sea turtle right here and the seahorses right above him. Um, as with the other Doreen Jones patterns I've seen, this one called for a lot of backstitching. A lot of backstitching. So, um, I mean, I think the backstitching totally makes the design, but at the same time, if you don't like backstitching, and I'm okay with it, but there was a lot of it, um, you know, probably not your best choice. So, I have ordered a frame for this one. Um, it will fit because I stitched it, um, uh, one over one, so it's much smaller. Um, it will fit in a nine by 11 picture frame pretty perfectly. Um, so I ordered one, I'm gonna frame it myself. I found one that has little seashells attached to it, so I will show you guys that when this is framed. But there it is, finished. Very happy, very happy that I stuck with that. I finished each of the clues uh, as the months ticked by. Two thumbs up. Excuse me, I've been dying, can you tell? Dying with an E, putting dye on things. Um, and I don't always get my gloves back on as quickly as I should. Anyway, moving on. Uh, finished for, another finish for 2017. Okay, so then let's talk uh, quickly about what else I've been working on. Um, I have a hair stuck somewhere here, my eyelashes, sorry. Um, okay, let's talk really quickly. I'm going to show you guys very briefly what I have been working on with my Chatelaine. I will go into more detail in that in early 2018. This is the Desert Mandala. And I'm sure you guys have heard if you've been on social media at all or follow any of the Facebook groups that Martina Rosenberg passed away this week um, unexpectedly and I just can't can't even imagine how rough that is for her family um, she's gonna she's gonna be missed she was an amazing artist her use of color was mind-blowing I think so, I don't know, weirdly, coincidentally, whatever you want to call it, um, I had just, so I had finished up my Under the Sea Sal and I decided I was going to work on my Chatelaine this week. And I just sat down to work on it on Tuesday and I opened up my tablet so I could have my chart pulled up and I had a whole bunch of like notifications on posts and stuff from the Chatelaine support group and... So it was, it was about the fact that she had passed away and that was kind of like a really weird coincidence, but it's been sort of comforting to work on a piece of hers this week and kind of think about her and, you know, all of her gifts that she's given the community and all of her gorgeous designs. I love so many of them. Anyway, <clears throat> sad footnote there. Well, Go along to the pretties. Okay, here's the Chatelaine currently. I am working on the cactus. Um, 
I have cactus thorns left to put in this motif, and I have little um, flower buds to add on this motif. Um, I have this motif finished except for the back stitching, and my plan is to kind of work down this way to sort of get finished here. Then what I'm going to do is, um, depending on how much time I have left in this rotation to devote, I will probably scroll the frame, scroll down so I can work up here. I haven't decided yet if I'm going to then work this. There's a very narrow um, sort of band of specialty stitches that forms another border here and creates a rect, um, a square. So I haven't decided if I'm going to do all of the cactus and then, which will, you know, require me moving the scroll frame so I can work up here, then moving it again so I can finish down here and then starting that border. I don't know. Um, the chart is worked in such a way for that border that I could easily place it. Like I could start it right now knowing where it runs through this. But I don't know. We'll see. I'm going to decide that after I get some more of the cacti stitched. So there it is currently. Still loving working on this. All of the cactus are stitched in silks. Um, and then when I do my next Chatelaine Diaries, I will talk about some of the specialty stitches that are here in these little flower buds and the pink flowers. So I can show those to you guys kind of a little more close up, but yep. So that is um, what I have been working on. I will work on that tonight and tomorrow being Friday. And then I decided that because I'm having some, I had been thinking woefully of my full coverage pieces that I have not worked on now in a little bit kind of getting the itch to get back into that. I decided that this weekend and next weekend, even though it is not yet the 21st, when the first full coverage Fanatics stitch along kicks off, that I was gonna go back and work on my Winter's Encounter on the weekends. So again, this is the mini version. Artwork by Laura Prindle and Charted by Heaven and Earth Designs. It's this beautiful dapple horse and this cute little chickadee and it actually feels like winter because there's snow here um when i had my boy ben um he did not really groove on the cold he was not a cold weather horse and um the gal i bought him from had a blanket for him and it fit him pretty well um but it was getting kind of scrungy looking so we upgraded and got him another one and it was flannel lined and he loved that blanket <laughs> he loved that blanket he um as the weather turned colder he would just be like you know how about today how about today and you don't want to put the blanket on the horse unless it's going to be either very cold and wet or just very cold they don't need it if they're out of the wind and they're not you know if they're not wet they're okay um usually down in the minuses, um, which we do get here occasionally, you know, that's, that's cold. It's cold to stand out in that. And you have to make sure they have a lot of food on board if they're going to do well through the night. But anyway, when we get to that certain point, like I probably would have had the blanket on him last two nights ago when it was 16 degrees out, he'd see that thing come out of storage and he would come trucking over to the fence and he would stand there while I put it on him and I got him all hooked into it. You could just tell he was so happy. He was nice and warm and snuggly. So kind of laugh that this horse is being way braver about the cold than Ben ever would have been. He had no interest in, in uncomfortableness. Uh, so here is the boring uh, work that I'm putting in on this. It's going to be a while before I get to any colors, y'all, really. This is white and pale 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 shell pink it's this upper corner right here of the design 
and I have I think I have to get down about here before I get to the main so I have a lot of pink and white stitches to put in at some point like right about here there's only a very pale pink that gets added so I'll have that to look forward to with a little bit of extra color um, so I will haul this out this weekend I'm gonna try to you know make some decent progress on it um, and then once the 21st comes this will be what I'll be focusing on until the end of the month um, and then I'll talk about that as part of my plans for going forward into 2018 um, I did want to sidebar here and say if you do not subscribe to Blitz Stitch Brian Blitz Stitch uh, on floss tube and you are a numbers geek or somebody who likes to keep track of your progress drop what you're doing and go over and watch his newest vid video it's a tutorial on using his spreadsheets and he was super gracious and included links to his Google Docs spreadsheets where you can download it and use it either as your own Google Docs or save it as an Excel file, which is what the originals were. So you can track all of your projects. My mind was blown. I am not great with Excel, like creating, I can use it once the uh, equations are set up and he's set up all the equations so you can track your progress like you can know okay I started this I've done X number of stitches if I continue working at this rate it'll be done in you know however many months or years um, and uh, it, it the calculations will continue to change every time you add data to it so you know if you go gangbusters on it for a weekend and then don't work on it at all for a week um, it doesn't plot it as if you were doing 600 stitches a day it plots it out to whatever that average would be over the course of a seven day period um, so anyway super helpful I will put the link to that video down below so anybody who's interested you can find it he's also got one that tracks your progress over the course of a year so you can tally up how many stitches total you've done how many projects you've worked on over the year and how many stitches you've put into each one of those. Mind blown. So thank you, Brian. I don't know if you watch me, but if you do, thank you because that, that made my little OCD but mathly challenged heart happy. So thank you for taking the time to do it. It maybe wasn't any big deal for you to do, maybe it was I don't know but either way just know that the community is grateful I'm you know living proof of that uh, and then the final thing that I have have been working on and will be working on this will be my focus piece for next week is uh, the Jim Shores 12 days of Christmas this was a mania start in 2016 or 2017 sorry this year in May and I have been itching to get stitching on it kind of in the holiday spirit. Um, it came as a kit, so it has all the floss. I replaced the 14 count Ada with a 22 count hand dyed Hardanger. This is Legacy from Picture This Plus. Here's where I am. Excuse the funkiness. This is not, this is actually a straight line. So I have almost all of the top border done. And I started this little interior border, which is this section right here is done. And then I've started this little purple bit. I have to do the corners still, but I wanted to kind of see where I was in terms of my placement um, before I went too gung-ho on doing that. So uh, this is what I'll be working on next week, Monday through Friday. Just, I'm gonna see how far I can get and then it will go away and probably just come out for certain like daily challenges or things like that on Stitch Mania. Um, smaller, briefer things until this time next year. Um, it's got all this stuff in it that I think would work well like if we if you needed to do something that was you know had animals in it you know it's got the cow it's got the swans it's got the turtle doves the partridge um, work on something with a specific color or I don't know there's just lots of things in here I think you could pick from 
And so my hope is to be able to next week kind of work this interior border so I can get some placement on things. So if I decide I want to jump down here and work on a section, I can do it without too much pain and angst and counting crises. So, um, yeah, so now that I just put in a few stitches last week, there's not, I haven't made a ton of progress on this, but we'll see how far I get next week while I'm working on it. And then I'll have that to show you guys um, next time around. Um, trying to think if there was anything else. I don't think so. I think that was it. I think that's been it for this current update. So um, just to quickly recap, I'm gonna work on my Chatelaine the next two days, Thursday and Friday. I'm gonna jump to my Heaven and Earth Winter's Encounter for the weekend. I'm gonna go on to the 12 Days of Christmas for next week. And then I'll pick up Winter's Encounter, Winter's Encounter again next weekend that will take me all the way through the end of the year. So I'm hoping to see some decent progress on that one. Um, I will be doing a 2018 plans type video. Um, I think I mentioned before, I am not gonna be doing the official year of whips, but I am going to be doing kind of my own personal year of whips. Um, I've got some sort of resolutions that will fit into that about getting some smaller pieces done and getting some work put in on some larger pieces. Um, I'll probably do kind of, it'll be a longer video because I'm gonna do a, a recap of what I've got in progress and kind of how I'm, I, I'm planning to tackle everything next year and keep up with the salves and the full coverage group. Um, and I'm also gonna be doing Stitch from Stash next year, which I don't think will be a huge deal. Uh, you don't count, you don't have to count any clubs that you're already signed up for. And since I have my Fabric of the Month Club, uh, the hand dyed floss club from color and cotton which is are ongoing those won't count towards the $15 that I've budgeted um, I'm thinking that's gonna be probably for um, potentially picking up some fabric or replenishing some DMC if I run through some colors quickly but um, I do have a whole bag of backups, so maybe I won't need to buy much. Um, or just if I come across something that's on sale and I'm thinking, oh, I really, you know, that's been on my wish list. I'd really like to have that. Um, yeah, so we'll see how that goes. But that's, that's the plan for the next video, which I will be filming probably at the end of next week. So I get that up before the holidays. So um, I also wanted to wish my friend Lisa in uh, New Zealand a very happy birthday. Her birthday is on the 13th. If you haven't watched her most recent video, she's doing a watch along, which is perfect, perfect, because I can stitch on whatever or I can work on some deadline knitting projects and uh, still be able to celebrate her birthday with her. So. Happy birthday, Lisa. I hope that you uh, have a great one and um, I'm planning on watching along with you uh, next Wednesday. So until I talk to you guys again next time, which will be in a few weeks, uh, 10 days, something like that, um, have a great uh, stitchy time. Um, I hope you're enjoying gearing up for the holidays wherever you are in the world. So take care guys, bye.